Hey guys, I thought I would relate a story that I was telling my son Mark the other day about something that happened about 15 years ago. About 15 years ago, Linda and I were invited to go to a what was going to be the beginning of the passion movement that Louis Giglio does uh, indoors. Now, they had done some meetings outside in some fields in, in Texas where uh, Piper had preached that famous message, Don't Waste Your Life, um, and then wrote a book on it. But uh, they were about to transition to doing some indoor meetings, and, and we were able to go to Atlanta and to be a part of that. And as a part of that, one of the breakout sessions was just an intimate talk with uh, Matt Redman. So, uh, so I go to this breakout session, and I go to this room, and the room looks like it only holds, I don't know, maybe 100 people. And there are no seats in it, so everyone's just sitting on the floor. It's a lot of what looks like youth pastors and college-age um, pastors, pastors of uh, students, that sort of thing. So everybody's got a backpack and they're just sitting on the floor cross-legged and waiting for Matt Redman to come and, and uh, talk to some leaders. But uh, we're hoping that he'll bring his guitar and, and sing some songs as well and that we'll, we'll have a time of, of worship. So here we are, you know, it's the cream of the crop in my opinion. I mean, people who are youth pastors and, and uh, pastors of college students to me are just some of the, the best people in the, in the kingdom of of God. So anyway, so we're in there and we're waiting and the time comes that Matt's supposed to be there and he's, he, he doesn't come out. And so people are getting a little antsy. I mean, it's a couple, two or three minutes past and we're, we're still waiting and waiting. It gets to be about five minutes after he's, he's still not there. And, um, and then out comes this other guy and he has a guitar with him. And here's what he says. He says, um, hey, guys, Matt's not going to make it. And so uh, what I thought I would do is just kind of sing through a few of Matt's songs. <laughs> well, as you, could, as you would expect, the, like, the air in the room just went out. I mean, you could tell people were disappointed. A few people even got up and, and left. And, um, and so he starts plucking away on the guitar and it's not great guitar playing. And he just sings a couple of, uh, words into the song and then out from the back, uh, comes Matt Redman. So some people have already left. Um, and the people are so excited that, that Matt Redman is there. So we had a great time. Matt did just a wonderful time answering questions and, and he did, lead us in worship. It was just a wonderful time. But I, the reason I tell you this story is that, man, the human heart is fickle when it comes to worship. And, um, you know, the truth of the matter is the, the guy that came out and was playing the guitar and singing yeah, is still worshiping the same God. And it grieves me and bothers me so often when people treat God like that in, in worship. In other words, it's got to be the right person leading me. We've got to be singing the, the perfect song or I'm going to have trouble worshiping God. I mean, people are so fickle. So I do think some songs are better than others. We do want to sing lyrically strong songs. And uh, from time to time, we're, we're led in worship, and someone will sing less than a, than a perfect song. They'll sing less than a great song. But I would say, even when you read the Psalms, some of those songs would be judged, like today, poorly. Like, like some of the Psalms that have repetitive phrases in them. I've, I've seen, you know, these uh, expositors of God's word condemn a contemporary song because it's just repetitive, a repetitive phrase. But um, just to say that God's steadfast love endures forever, if you just sang that over and over again, you would be doing well. And um, so, so I just want to encourage you uh, today that when you're in a worship service or when you're in a worship time, 
uh, focus on the fact that you're in the presence of God and that you're worshiping God, or at least you're supposed to be worshiping God, and you're not worshiping the worship. So God is good, and God is amazing, and God is worthy of worship, and God is holy, even if it isn't the perfect song, and even if it's not great music, and even if the leader that's trying to lead isn't Matt Redman. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that God is God, whether Matt Redman or some other great uh, worship leader is, is leading in worship. And uh, so what happened? I don't know if Matt set it up that way, you know, if he just wanted to be funny and, and come out late, or if he only wanted people in there who really wanted to hear from God, who really wanted to worship God. I'm not sure exactly what he was doing that day, but it was a great lesson for me. It was a great lesson for me. I, I have to admit, I was disappointed. I, I like Matt Redman. I think he leads worship well. And I was a little disappointed, but I, you know, in my spirit, I was having a little self-talk go on. And my self-talk, even then, 15 years ago, was, hey, Dan, um, it's God that we're worshiping, not Matt Redman. So it doesn't matter. And so I closed my eyes, and I was, I was entering into worship even with this guy who was butchering uh, Matt's songs. <laughs> Anyway, blessings to you. When we get together in worship, uh, it doesn't matter who's leading worship. Listen, let your worship of God be indicative of who God is, not indicative on whether or not you like the song or not, or whether or not you particularly like the worship leader. Blessings.